Hi everyone, it's Kine, and this video is my top 20 challenge for the Face Awards 2018. Our theme for this round was Machinist. I took some inspiration from the world of steampunk. While originally referring to Victorian era fashion, modern steampunks now take inspiration from all throughout history and through fiction even. So I decided I would do the same and take our theme of Machinist and combine it with Baroque era style with this Marie Antoinette inspired hairdo and corset and robe. I wanted to juxtapose our theme of metal and rust and grunge with opulence and elegance and extravagance. So keep on watching and see how it's done. Of course, we're starting off with a clean face and sidebar. I heard my fingers setting up the lights for this video, but alas, I trucked on. I used the Vichy Mineral 89 products in my prep, kindly given to us by our sponsor Vichy. Um, but afterwards, I'm going to go ahead and starting off with the makeup, block out my eyebrows because we're going to be going for a browless naked mole rat look today. Powder the brows down and go over your face with your base makeup, which I have a full in-depth video all about already, so I'll go over this part pretty quickly. The only difference is I usually like to carve out the brow highlight with like a white cream, but since we're going browless today, I'm not doing that step. Otherwise, this is identical to my foundation routine video. I use the Highlight and Contour Cream Palette to add all the dimensions to my face as I normally would. And then after setting everything with um, loose powder, I went in with a Highlight and Contour Powder Palette. Now, I use my contour brush to actually get started on the eyeshadow. So along with the regular cheek and temple and jaw and nose contouring, I wanted to start introducing some darkness to the eyes in a very blown out, sort of soft, smoky way. I then started to blend in some warm brown and red shadows into the mix with a large eyeshadow blending brush. The way I tend to do my makeup is always very fierce, sultry, striking, pulled up and out is what I'm, I'm always saying. But for this look, think haunting and sad and high fashion. We want droop down eyes, so the concentration here goes into the upper inner corner of the eye. And I'm even bringing it down to the cheeks and blush area. And the reason I'm using all of these warm red browns is because it matches with the color story of metal and rust. For me, makeup isn't about the step one, step two, step three. When it comes to the artistry aspect especially, it's really more a feeling and an intuition that's guiding me. I took the black NYX eye gloss, but any cream black color will be sufficient. It's not really important that it's glossy because we're going to cover this in glitter. But it's good that it's cream because it makes it easier to blend. So put this onto the lid and then blend the edges into the eyeshadow. Cream blacks tend to always be more powerful than a powdered black eyeshadow. So for a really intense black, I like to use a cream or liquid formula, then set it with powder. I'm taking two colors of glitter in copper and silver, which again are the two main colors of the look, and I'm putting them both on the eyes where we put that black cream color and then blending it out. After every step, it's important to be blending everything with either a clean blending brush or one with a mid-tone brown on it. For the lower lash line, I took the NYX metallic eye pencil in gunmetal and lined my waterline, and I blended that out with some brown. I had some ideas to do tears like running down my eyes, but it didn't really look the way I wanted to. I just kind of thought it would just be too much. So instead I had the idea to add smudges like coal to, and dirt by rubbing black eyeshadow from my fingers right to the top of the cheekbones. I'm using the Dewy Finish Setting Spray to give my cheeks a sort of wet tacky base that I'm going to apply glitter on. This doesn't really stick on as nicely as a gl glitter primer or adhesive would, but I like using setting spray when I want the glitter to look really diffused, like it just rained glitter on me, versus looking too concentrated in one area. I put in some contacts here, and then to prep for some lashes, I added some liquid liner, which I didn't bring out into a wing. Like I said, it's not about being fierce and sharp. I just added liner because I wanted a base for my lashes to sit. These lashes are paper lashes um, custom made by a friend of mine, Sabrina Lawrence from the States, and I curled them with a handle of some eyeliner and then sprayed them with copper and silver spray paint to match my color scheme. This is where all the fun starts because we get to add all of our little appliques. At first, I tried to put them on as regular lashes, but I was having a little bit of trouble with the size. Um, and I also thought that after spraying the color on them, it looked a little weird up against my eyes. So I settled on wearing my regular glam lashes and then I glued the bigger top lashes to my eye socket where it wouldn't move where I blinked, but it would still give the metallic effect that I wanted to give. And I just blended out that edge with more glitter. The edge of the bottom lash, I just blended into the black, which I was okay with since I already had black lower liner there. 
And next up, I'm gonna glue on some decorative gears that I bought online in silver and gold and copper. I'm just laying down prosade where I wanna put them, and I basically want them to kind of be cascading all around my eyes to frame them. You might notice I took those gray lenses out. I was having some issues with my eyes and in deciding which lenses I wanted to wear. Listen, when you're working with long acrylic nails, plus glitter, plus colored contacts, plus the fact that I'm just generally a gross person, it's like the perfect storm. And next up, I got these little chains from the craft store. I got them in a slew of different sizes that you saw was draped over my hair and my dress. And the smallest size I'm gonna drape over my face. So I measured a length based on what I thought looked good in the mirror. And then I cut the chain and hot glued it to the gears that I put on my face. So I'm not hot gluing it to my skin. I'm gluing it to the gears. So I barely feel it, if at all. I first had the idea to glue them onto the big paper lashes, which I thought would have been a really cool concept, but it turned out that they just weighed them down too much and it looked like wonky. So the gears serve this double purpose to one, frame the eyes, but also two, to anchor the chains. At one point I tried to use nail glue because I, I've used that in the past to glue my earrings on and I feel like that's at least safer for your skin than hot glue, but you definitely don't want that anywhere close to your eyes, believe me. I started tearing up, so I went back to the glue gun. Is it worse to burn yourself or to poison yourself? I don't know. I've put my body through some horrifying things in the name of drag, and I don't want you guys to hurt yourself, so don't think of this as a tutorial so much as it is a documentary into the mind of a sadistic crossdresser. In retrospect, a much safer approach, which I discovered later, would have been to hot glue the chains to the gears, like onto the table before gluing the gears onto my face. I didn't do this at first since plan A was just to attach the chains to the lashes in the first place, but when I got the feeling to add a chain underneath my eye where there wasn't a gear yet to glue it to, that's when I realized I could have been doing this all along. Finally, to finish off this look, I'm gonna block out my lips with foundation, and then we're going back in with the, that black cream color on my fingers to kind of do a rosy Marie Antoinette style lip stain, except in black instead of a blush color, to keep in my theme. So this is pretty much the finished makeup look. Let's do a little quick overview of my hair and outfit now. But first you have to see the initial sketch that I had of the look because the idea for the outfit and silhouette and the draping really came first. I was inspired of course by Baroque era fashion with lots of extravagance, draped pearls and jewels. I just substituted with chains, the colors I switched out. I lost those big gears in the hair and the big petticoat ball gown because the chains were weighing down the gown part and I wanted things to look less costumey and more high fashion. As you can see on my face, my initial idea for the makeup was really not that inspired. The makeup honestly was a little more of an afterthought. It really came together after seeing what I had done with my costume and hair. For the hair, I started off with a brown lace front wig, which I had curled and been backcombing. I sectioned off the bottom couple of rows of curlers and started backcombing everything up from there. I happen to already have a Marie Antoinette inspired hairdo tutorial already on my channel, which you can watch. So I'm not going over anything really in depth here, but instead of draping pearls in the end, I just draped chains. I got these flowers at the craft store, which I cut up individually from the trim that they came in and Bobby pinned these into the hair. And I also glued some gears into the wig. I initially tried gluing them onto a little hair clips that I would stick into the hair so I didn't have to directly glue the hair. But then I thought, what the hell, go big or go home. I didn't really mind sacrificing this wig in the name of fashion. What I didn't show on camera was I sprayed some of the flowers and chains in that copper spray paint since they already had the silver color to them. I'd experimented with rusting the chains by inducing a chemical reaction with vinegar and hydrogen peroxide and salt, but it only worked on one style of chain that I got. I didn't bother trying any harder, I just settled on buying copper spray paint to simulate the look of rust. I got this white corset off of Amazon as well as a brown fabric dye. I could have also used a silver or brown spray dye, but dyeing this corset was one of my first steps. There was a lot of jumping around and discovering this works better than that. After the corset dried, it ended up looking more gray than brown, god knows why, but that's when I started rolling with the gray and copper theme versus a brown theme that I had initially had in mind. I glued a bunch more little gears to this corset, mostly focusing on the center and diffusing out. What you didn't see was I also added the rest of the flower trim I had to the top of the corset. And these little titty things are actually parts of a toilet that I got when I couldn't find big enough gears. 
It all worked out pretty well because while adding to the machinist aspect of the look, the intricacy really nods to the Baroque era's obsession with complex patterns and print. I also asked myself if I wanted to do something around the neck to give a nod to how Marie Antoinette met her death, but I figured the neck was pretty much the only part of my body left that was still like clean and open and I wanted to leave it that way. Otherwise it would have been way too much because you know, everything else totally settled. Here's a closer look at the detail in the corset and the outfit. I didn't film the sewing of the robe because I was kind of experimenting, didn't really know where I was going with it. But fun fact, this is the same fabric from the curtains in my last Face Awards video. I paid good money for this fabric, y'all. I'm really happy with the way things turned out. I hope you guys liked it. If you want to see me take on one more challenge theme, please vote for me to move on to the third challenge by voting at faceawards.com every day from June 15th to the 21st. You have three votes each day per email address, so voting every day really helps. Aside from voting, liking and commenting under this video also really helps me out. Um, I can't wait to read what you guys have to say in the comments, but until my next video, I hope you're all doing well. Bye.